Um, first of all, I say, isn't that terrible? Then I say, how come people, how come people in a huge migration line, how, how come they have cell phones? What, what's going on? Think of it. Why do they have cell phones? I mean, you know, you wouldn't think the cell phone would be exactly number one on priority. They have, they have so many cell phones. Anyway, here's the story, folks. We're not going to take them into our country. And if we do take them in, they're going back if I win. They're going back. They're going back. They have, they have. We are a country that soon will owe $21 trillion. It's $19 trillion right now. We just signed a totally ridiculous budget that was done in like 24 hours. It's unbelievable. And you know what? The Democrats, we get that. Okay, we understand it. We know where they're coming from. The Republicans have let us down. And you can say what you want. When they signed budgets like that, when they signed budgets like that, they were supposed to start right after the last budget and knock the hell out of everything and balance. But that nobody does it. And I tell the story. They get in. They fight. We're going to end Obamacare, they say. We're going to do all these different things. We're going to balance the budget. And then they get down to Washington, right? They get down to Washington and they say, darling, and in some cases it's a woman saying darling the other way, right? But they say, darling, look at the ceilings. Look how beautiful the columns are. Look at the angels at the top. Isn't this incredible? We never want to leave. And then they say, how do you vote? I vote any way you tell me to vote. They totally changed their tune. They totally changed their tune. And I promise you this, I promise you this, I swear to you this, President Trump will never change his tune. Nobody has to. We'll never change our tune. So, I love you too, man. That was a very tough, strong looking guy that said that, but I still love you. Thank you very much. So, when I started, thank you. When I started, we were talking about all these things. We we're talking about China. We we're talking about, and we will repeal, we will replace Obamacare. It's dying anyway. By the way, by the way, folks, it's dying anyway. In 17, it's dead. It's all the wrong people joining, the wrong income. It is a mess like nobody's ever seen. It's dying. We're losing our doctors. You know, the insurance companies make a fortune. They took good care of Obama. They're the big beneficiaries. We're going to get rid of the artificial borders. We're going to have real bidding. We're going to have great insurance. It's going to be less money, and it's going to be good. Your premiums are going up right now, 25, 35, 45, and 55 percent. Your deductibles are through the roof. You'll never even get to use it unless you're dead. You won't get to use it. And it's a disgrace that it was ever approved in the first place. So, when I began, I talked about the veterans. I talked about we're gonna build a military. I talked about all these things. And I talked about the border big. And then what happened is Paris. That was a big one. That was horrible. These people are animals. And I tell the press, they were saying, the mastermind behind the attack. The mastermind. Did you see the mastermind? I call him the guy with the dirty hat, right? No, the mastermind. They build them up so big. And then they wonder why the internet is taking our youth where they're going out and they're fighting for ISIS. They're fighting for ISIS. They build these people up like they're Robin Hood and so big. And they use the word, all of them, they use the word mastermind. And I, every speech I'd say, don't call them a man. And you know what? Now they're not calling a mastermind anymore. It's really true. The press is not doing it, which is great, which is great. They say he's brilliant. He's brilliant. He's brilliant. What? They drop a few people into these various rooms in France and they start shooting everybody. And by the way, the guy that was talking about gun control over there, just so you understand, had you had, instead of hundreds, Paris is the toughest you talk about gun control. Paris has the toughest gun control just about in the entire world. France has the toughest gun control just about in the entire world. If a few of those people that are now dead, if a few of those people had guns strapped to their ankles or strapped to their waist, you wouldn't have the problem. Now, 
why you wouldn't have the problem. I mean, you would have had fight. If I were there, I'm licensed to carry. I will tell you this. If I were there, if somebody were there, with, if we had some firepower in the opposite direction, those people would have been gone. But they talked about this guy, and he was a slob. And by the way, let me tell you, the guy is a stupid person. He was a man with a very low IQ, I can guarantee that. And that's what they should say. They should say the fact. What did he do? He put a couple of people in there starting to shoot everybody, a couple of places. So they lost 130 people. Many more are going to die based on the fact that I hear they're so badly wounded, so badly hurt. And so that was a big thing. And then you had in California where you had these two people. She should have never been allowed to come into the country. 